Let's return now to Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. Welcome back, y'all. You're listening to Westchester Eye on the Radio. I am Ardina Seward. Is that because we're in southern Westchester, <laughs> you said, uh, y'all? It's, it's just kind of rolled out there. I, I don't know why. I got I that, that vernacular inspiration. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm Ardina Seward. With John Charan, mine is Peter Moses. You're listening to Westchester Eye on the Radio on 1460 WVOX, which is also streamed live, WVOX.com. And our guest is here on the line today. We were worried that he wasn't going to be, but thankfully we have him now. Late, but he's here. Greg Antico. Greg, you are here. Welcome. Craig, with a C. Craig. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, Greg is a co-founder of a wonderful organization called RIP. And what RIP does is, is it, buys med- it buys up medical debt. In other words, medical debt, if, if, if you are a, a consumer and you have a, a big hospital bill and you're not able to pay that bill, that bill gets bundled with a bunch of other people's bills that cannot be paid get sent to a debt collector, and then they send you all these horrific notices and, thre- and threaten to take away your dog, your car, your house, yada, yada, yada. But what this organization does is that they buy that debt, and that debt is forgiven, and your credit is wiped clean. Your slate is wiped clean, and you are able to proceed without having that hanging over your head. So uh, I'll let you take over from there, Craig. Well, Craig, Craig well, first off, why don't you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to create this and when did you actually do it and how has it grown sure sure uh rip medical debt was inspired by a group of if you can believe this occupy wall street occupy wall street people were trying to prove to uh america and the world of all these disparities and one of the main disparities was was debt medical debt student loan debt and other debt and they came up with the original idea. Jerry, my partner, Jerry Ashton, and I actually were in the collection business. We were in collection agencies and were executives in the collection business. And uh, they came to Jerry one day and said, Jerry, we have an idea. Um, what do you think of this? We, we'd like to buy a million dollars of medical debt. So we're going to start a, a charity. We're going to raise $50,000. Now, instead of collecting on it, we're going to abolish it. What do you think? And he's like, I think that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. (laughs) 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 They go, go, why? And he said, well, first of all, a million dollars is not even a rounding error for these hospitals and doctors groups. Uh, So it's going to be seen maybe not even as a gesture. It's it's not even a rounding error. And they said, well, can we give you a different perspective? And he's he's a very open guy. So he said, sure. They said, well, we don't think that people should go into debt for basic necessities like medical, you know, your health, or you should go into debt for your education. So, okay, that's a good point. And they said, well, if we put this in the paper that we abolished a million dollars of debt, you think that'll get any press? Because that's what we're trying to do. We're using this as a tactic. He said, yeah, it probably would get good press, and it did, actually. And um, then he said, well, what do you think if your bill, your $10,000 bill, was in this million-dollar portfolio and you couldn't pay it? Do you think it would be just a gesture? So he, it hooked him. He called me, and I said, that's a crazy idea, but I, I was running a collection agency at the time. And I said, you know, I can help, but I've got five kids. I can't do this for free like everybody's doing. So I said, I'll, I'll come up with an arrangement. So I shifted my collection agency into a debt-buying business and debt forgiveness business instead of what it was, which is a collection agency. And we did that for two years. Now, in, when, when this you... was in 2012 and 2013. Right. And what ended up happening is they, instead of raising 50000 they raised $700,000. And we abolished over $30 million of debt. Wow. Well, then I was hooked on forgiving debt. It became a, about a third of my business. I closed my collection agency down and was just doing this. And they came to me and said, Craig, at the end of 2013, we're going to stop doing this. We're going to go do something else. And I'm like, how could you do that? You're helping like 25,000 people get out of debt that they can't pay. 
Well, we just did it as a tactic. They said, I looked at Jerry and I said, Jerry, we can't let this happen. We're the only ones that know how to do this. We know all the debt buyers. We have data. Let's do it ourselves. Well, that was, that was the dumbest thing you ever could do because we didn't know how to raise money. <laughs> and uh, we went two and a half years without, you know, we went into poverty and that was just terrible. But then we, uh, then we made it, so to speak. How did and you make now it? We're, how did you almost, make it? How, we've lost over four hundred million dollars of debt. How did how did you make it? How did you transform it for, to uh, get yourself into a situation where you could raise funds? Well, the John Oliver effect, we call it. John Oliver put us on his show last week tonight with John Oliver. Mm-hmm. It's, it's been seen by almost ten million people, mm-hmm. and that's what really ramped us up. Um, and that year, in two thousand sixteen. We raised about two hundred thousand dollars. The next year, about two point something million, and this year, over five million. So we, that was really the thing that got us on the map, is being on the John Oliver show where he abolished fifteen million dollars of debt and he donated to us on his show, and that's how it started, really in earnest. Well, you're on Westchester Eye on the radio, so hopefully. People out there in the audience, and I don't think they're going to be able to give you millions of dollars, but they will be able to donate, I'm sure, to your cause, which is a very worthy cause. Because, I mean, I don't know, the the impact of, of medical debt is so overwhelming. People losing their houses, just the stress of getting the bills in, saying you must pay, oh, you must God. pay, you must pay. And this is while they're trying to manage their own illnesses. And in some ways... That kind of, it doesn't mean that people should be absolved of their responsibility to pay, but the stress of the the, bur- the burden of having to pay almost it, it does not help heal the person who needs the medical care. No, it doesn't. And there's 15 million people that have just one bad mark on their credit report, and it's a bad mark for medical. And they shouldn't have to have that if they can't afford to pay. And that's what we're doing. We're buying up that debt that people can't pay. It's just sad that they can't come to me and say, can you help me with my debt? We haven't been able to figure that out yet. We do it in, it's a random act of kindness. It's, it's, we'll send out letters to them and tell them that their debt has been abolished, but they didn't ask for it. We just figured it out using data from TransUnion and other sources. Well, speaking of random acts of kindness, on the other side of the break, which is coming up soon, I'd like to talk about your November 26th deadline which assisted a lot of u.s veterans so we're going to talk about that in a few minutes after this commercial you are listening to westchester eye on the radio on wvox 1460 also stream live at wvox.com i am ardina sewer john charan and our guest is greg antico who is the the co-founder of a wonderful wonderful organization called rip which helps to forgive your medical debt. And we're going to have phone numbers. We're going to have websites for you to contact if you need help. Stay with us because there's more interesting, important information coming to you in a few. Let's return now to Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. Welcome to Westchester Eye on the Radio, our weekly discussion of issues relating to Westchester and the surrounding area. I'm John Turan, along with Ardina Seward and our special phone-in guest today, and it's a very, very topical topic, is Craig Antico, who is the chairman of the board of RIP Medical Debt, and they do the wonderful act of purchasing medical debt that is out there on the market and having donors contribute to it to eliminate it for the people who owe the money. And Craig, how much of RIP medical debt is supported by companies and corporations and how much is supported by individuals? Okay. Individuals represent over 70% of our funding. Wow. Wow. And it's amazing how you can even, you can just donate a dollar and abolish a hundred dollars of debt. So there's a very big multiple. So if, if you, if you do a hundred, it's, it's over, I mean, God, it's amazing. You do ten dollars, it's a thousand dollars. 
a hundred dollars is ten thousand dollars worth of debt. So you're you've got such a an impact. The good thing is, if you if you write in and say, Craig, I'd like this, this debt to go toward veterans, for example, we'll abolish debt of veterans, and a hundred percent of the donations that we get go to buying and abolishing the debt and the data that goes with it. So it's um it's an amazing multiple. We get debt for such a lower price that it, it just multiplies the donor's dollar. Now, Ardina brought up uh, the concept before the break about this uh, involvement with the veterans. Is that a new program for you, and uh, is there any special you know, promotion going on about that? You know, something, we've been doing it since, um, since 2014, but we've just started to, we, we actually were in the Veterans Day Parade with a float talking about it and having a bunch of the veterans on there. Uh, we just care about veterans. My co-founder is a veteran. Uh, the, my number one debt buyer, who has bought $2.5 billion of debt over his career, Michael Burroughs, he's a, a full bird colonel. So we just care about that. Uh, we've abolished so far $64 million of debt. That's pretty amazing. And, 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 just, uh-huh. and just so you know, Craig, uh, I also co-host the show right before this one which is the only weekly show in the New York City market dedicated to telling the stories of veterans in the active military. And we have talked for a very long time about how the Department of Defense and the Veterans Administration struggle to have a compatible computer system and that very often records are difficult to to share between both groups and it causes great difficulties for the veterans, and sometimes they're left with situations where they can't get the funding that they need to to have the procedures that they need. So hearing no, about this is a, is a really is a really sad. really wonderful thing to hear about. Thanks. I mean, we, we went down to uh, my Jerry and I have gone down to Washington D.C. twice, and and talked to the subcommittee on veteran affairs and health, and we found that just in emergency room visits alone. There's over six billion dollars that's owed by veterans that was not covered when it it was supposed to be covered. Mm-hmm. Six billion dollars over the last five years, and it happens every year for just under hundred thousand vets. They go to the hospital, the the, the 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 ambulance is charged to them, and the hospital is charged to them because the VA is denying. For these are members of the VA. These are not just a veteran walking off the street trying to get this. This is veterans, members of the VA mm-hmm. that should be getting paid, for, you know, reimbursed for this, and they're not. And that's why we're doing such a such a job with them because they they shouldn't have to be paying this kind of uh, kind of money. They don't have it. Now, I think a lot of our listeners are pretty excited about this this program. Where can they find out more information? Is there a phone number? Is there a website? Why don't you uh, let our listeners sure. know? Sure. Sure. They can go to www.ripmedicaldebt.org. Ripmedicaldebt.org. That's what the millennials call it, Rip Medical. And, and uh, RIP Medical Debt is what we older folks call it. <laughs> yes. Well, but, um, well, well yes. I, I guess it's a play on words because RIP means rest in peace, meaning, meaning yes. we want to make medical debt truly dead so that there is yes. no, no no real debt dead out there and it's That's not right. too late we're, for people. we're trying to we just wrote a book called end medical debt and it talks about the different ways that we can end medical debt we don't think that ending medical debt per se is the most important thing but ending the hardship of medical debt is something that we have in our control regardless of the amount of debt that gets incurred by the poor or those in hardship and it's not too late for people to contribute. I mean, it, we're only uh, days away from the end of the year, but if people donate now, they can still write that off their taxes for 2018. It's a last-minute donation, but it'll make a difference in your taxes. It'll also make a difference in the life of, of people who have suffered more than they, than they, really, than they really should have. Now, I, um, my understanding, too, uh, Craig, is that the November 6th date, there was $50 million targeted for veterans. And then in, I think there's one that's coming up, which is also, there was a $50 million donation, $50 million debt wipeout for Thanksgiving 
and there's another fifty million dollars before the end of the year. Do I have my statistics correct, or or? Yeah, it's actually we we just we just put money down to abolish a hundred million dollars of debt about a week ago, and we're going to be selecting those accounts coming up this next week and a half. And those letters will be going out before the end of the year, so people can still get in on that. You know, if if somebody puts a campaign together or wants their corporation to put a campaign together. $10,000 will abolish a million dollars of debt, so we could add to that as we go along. We've got another about $25 million of debt for veterans that are going to be going out um, out of that $100 million in debt abolishment. So, yeah, we have time to do it even before the end of the year because I'm just about to pull the trigger on a big, big purchase. Now, do you get letters from people say, talking about how it impacted their lives uh, how it has changed their lives, how it's made their lives better. Do you have any contact with individuals themselves? We do. We do. We, the interesting thing, we have about 40 different campaigns going on at any one time across the country. Uh, and all the NBC stations, for example, have contributed. They've, they, if you can believe this, NBC Universal has put on campaigns that have enabled us to raise over $469,000 dollars. All you have to do is add two zeros to that to know that they abolished over $46 million of debt because they've actually promoted what we're doing. So they're an amazing company that's stepping up, but it's happening all throughout the country. Um, I don't know if that answered your question. I well, but, but cause I'm trying to get the audience to understand, even for people who can only give $5, how that changes the future of a single mother, an elderly person, a vet, who has has been overwhelmed with medical debt? Can you cite an instance where yeah, somebody's life I can, has been actually. made? Now I remember. Um, yeah, we get we get letters all the time in our inbox. We get letters in the mail. Wrote and said that he had been so upset about the the medical debt that was on his his credit report that and he couldn't even get a, a credit for a house, and now he can. So it makes a difference. And Craig, and they you, lose that, Craig, that you're gonna credit have, mark. You're going to have to hold the, that thought because we're drawing to a commercial break here. You're listening to Westchester Eye on the Radio here on WVOX 1460 AM and heard worldwide at WVOX.com. We're speaking with Craig Antico, who is the chairman of the board of RIP Medical Debt. And we're talking about ways that are really helping the communities in terms of millions of dollars that are being wiped out from people's medical expenses. Stay tuned, and we'll have more conversation with Craig right after this. Let's return now to Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. Here we are again, folks. We are down to our final 10 minutes. You're listening to Westchester Eye on the Radio. I am Ardina Seward along with John Sharan. Peter Moses is off today, but our third person is our guest, Craig Antico, and Craig is the co-founder of a medical, I want to call it medical relief is the wrong word. It's, a, it's basically a medical debt forgiveness organization called RIP, which is a fantastic, yeah, fantastic charity. And for people who want to find it, it's at ripmedicaldebt.org. So it's not just RIP, it's RIP Medical Debt is what it uh, is. What it is. And Craig, you brought up an interesting topic that I think we need to discuss. You mentioned that $469,000 can wipe out $46 million worth of medical debt. Can you talk to our audience a little bit about what you've learned about the markups in the medical industry? Yeah, sure. And when, we, when, when a person comes in that doesn't have insurance, oftentimes they're paying the MSRP, you know, the, the the top retail rate, mm -hmm. we call it the master chart, the charge master rate in a hospital term. And that's like five times the amount that, say, a Medicaid patient and the government might have to pay. Mm -hmm. So you've got to understand that, that this is like the retail price. So what you, you should do first when, you, when you're going to the hospital, and by the way, people go in and out of poverty all the time. Like about 9% of the people that aren't in poverty today 
will go into poverty and out of poverty over the next two to three years. Wow. So it's not as if this is a permanent situation. This happens all the time. And if you are in a poverty situation, you can look up in the Google. You can look up Google, Federal Poverty Level Guideline. Find out what percentage of the poverty level you and your family are making right now so that when you go to the hospital, you know to ask for charity care, for example. You have to know that there's financial assistance programs. Every single hospital in the metropolitan area and through this country have financial assistance programs. But the crazy thing is, my experience is that over 30% of the accounts that get bought and sold and placed for collection, actually people that qualified for charity care, and they're not getting it. So Nate. people have to know their rights. Are they making less than two times the poverty level? And if they are, shoot, you ask for charity care, and you do not have to pay for your care at the hospital. Now, Craig, your company, RIP Medical Debt, uh, announced that they were trying to uh, raise $250 million by the end of the year to uh, to reach a goal here in terms of retiring uh, medical debt. Uh, you'd like to forgive that much, and uh, I'm assuming that that means you're looking to raise $250,000. How far along are you in that process, and uh, have you reached your goal? We, um, we would have to raise about, actually, $2.5 million to abolish $250 million ah, of debt because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's 100 to 1. Right. However, um, we just did abolish $250 million, so we actually made our goal. Outstanding. Now, yeah, now, now we're trying to add to that. Um, last year, for example, in December, we got about 40% of our donations for the whole year in December. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest times for giving. Um, And it might only average between $50 and $100 per person, but it's tremendous impact that they have on people. $100 abolishes $10,000 of debt for about three or four people. So it's, it's, and it goes directly to abolishing debt. I get tremendously large donors that give me $150,000 a year for three years and that pays for my million dollars worth of overhead, any money that comes in from, say, this, that actually goes directly to me to buy the debt, pay for the postage to send them the letter, uh, buy the data so I can qualify. Just so you know, this is how we qualify um, people. If, if you make less than two times the poverty level, if you're insolvent, or if you're, if you're actually... Spending more than five percent of your five percent of your of your out of pocket expenses on medical debt or the or the debt. And, and, and speaking of, of of individuals, I noticed on your website that if a person an, an individual wants to be considered to have their medical debt uh, forgiven, they they can register. Could you tell the audience about that? They can register. Sure, yeah. sure. One of my one of the saddest things that I notice you know, every day is I get calls and letters asking for help. I have not figured the way yet to help individuals directly. Because if I, let's say I get a a person that owes $10,000 and I decided to try to find their debt and abolish it, I'd have to call up the hospital, the doctor, I'd have to negotiate with them, and then I'd have to pay the debt off. We don't do that. We buy the whole debt in bulk. So I haven't been able to figure out how to do it one-on-one. It's just not happening. I, for example, I'm buying $100 million of debt, and that's for about, that might be 100,000 people. Wow. Now, if, if I tried to do it individually, I would have to pay probably 50 times as much money as we pay now. So it's kind of like so it's, like it's, lotto. If somebody somebody's name uh, somebody's name may or may not be in that bundle, in may that batch. In, in that batch. That's it. It's a random act of kindness. But we are we do have a place called Get Help on the bottom of our webpage. You can register. I've had over ten thousand people register there and tell me their whole story about what this debt is doing to them, and it it just kills me. I can't take it anymore. So I don't read it as much. But what we do is we actually will put those 10,000 people in our database, and whenever we go out to buy debt, 
we check to see if that debt is in the portfolios that we're going to buy. So we know that we're helping the people that come to us, but it's such a small percentage that we don't want to give people a, a false hope. You know, we only have about $5 billion, unbelievable, only, only, only $5 billion. billion dollars of debt for only about 2.5 million people that we have the debt that we can abolish for them. So the chances of me having, you know, any percentage of that 10,000 people is pretty darn low. Um, so I don't want to give a false hope, but they can register, and eventually I'm going to come up with ability to do this. It's just going to take a couple of years or so. I mean, I'm, I'm pushing to do that, but I can't do it right away. Craig, do you or any of the other members of RIP Medical Debt ever think of yourselves as Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we're just so glad. That we're probably uniquely qualified to buy the debt, make sure we're not overpaying, know the hardship. I mean, we went into hardship ourselves. I mean, we, my, my family went into poverty to do this. You went into debt yourself. I mean, yeah, my wife is like, what are we doing going into debt and hardship to help other people get out of debt? What's wrong with this picture? But we knew that we were really the only ones that could do this. We're insiders. And at first, we were completely pushed down to the bottom by the collection industry. They thought that we were the worst thing that ever hit the earth. Uh, but now they're realizing that we're complementary, that we're trying to help the people that can't pay. And they're not the people that they should be collecting on. And that's why we're so successful. Because now we're a win-win-win. And that we do feel like Santa Claus sometimes. But we don't do it because of that. We do it because, finally, we found a way to stop the hardship of medical debt. It doesn't matter. It's wonderful that way. And Craig Antico, that'll have to be the last word today. If you want more information, remember to go to ripmedicaldebt.com, and you can find out more there. And Ardina, we're we, going to be off for the next few weeks, but, we'll, you know, uh, do we have any plans? Uh, we should have a, a really good guest coming up after the first of the year, so check our website. Check, check, go to Facebook. You're going to look at Westchester Eye on the Radio for postings, advice, the whole nine yards, and, and what's going to be coming up in the new year. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, be well, and we'll see you in 2019. Indeed. Everyone have a safe and happy Christmas.